Hey guys, it's Alex. Welcome back to the 11th part of my series called Airbnb V 2.0. And basically, I just finished uh, one of my biggest projects, or actually not one, the biggest project that I've ever made. Um, I don't think I can announce it yet because it's not uploaded, but I will make sure to definitely notify you guys when it is up and running. But anyway, so what we're going to be doing in this video is, well, basically, we have this top nav right here, which looks a little bit different because it actually looked like this when we started recording. Now, obviously, it looks different now, uh, but, you know, we can always, what? Hold on a second. Let me refresh. Uh, we can always change that, but to be honest, I like mine better. But what we're going to be doing in this video is, well, this is very weird and I have no idea why, but basically what is happening, uh, literally yesterday I recorded this video and I had to redo it because it took 20 minutes to do something uh, extremely simple and I want to do it uh, in less. But, so basically what's supposed to happen is when we scroll down to about here, it should like toggle this menu. And I'm gonna go ahead and refresh my cache because that, I swear to God that it was like that yesterday. I don't, I, I have no idea why. I, I'm scrolling but nothing is happening. Man, Airbnb <laughs> with their updates. Like literally one series, probably 10 updates. Oh, well, well, we are going to be doing that um, just because it's really simple <laughs> and I already planned it, so can't get it out of my mind. And plus, this is going to take uh, a while to create, well, you know, these columns, I mean rows. But yeah, anyway, so let's get right into the video. We have um, imported of our functions.js here in jQuery, so... The first thing we're going to do is add a uh, onload event handler, so document.ready function, and basically whenever the document is ready, whatever, whatever is in here is going to run. Um, well, actually, we don't need this. What we need is a window.scroll function, and we're going to define a variable called current current pause and it's going to equal to i mean come on this dot uh wait i i, I wrote uh, okay so this dot offset no it's going to be this dot scroll top there we go and then let's just console dot log current pause let's refresh open our console and scroll okay um let's actually go ahead and do margin margin bottom of like 1500 pixels to get some scrolling why is nothing happening what the hell is going on here let's refresh i'm not sure what's happening what Margin bottom one th oh sorry uh, one thousand okay pixels and there we go when we scroll you can see that we are getting the value of our scroll and so basically what I want to happen is whenever we scroll to here I want it to toggle so like about here I want it about here I want it to toggle so I'm gonna get the ID of that and it is ID search bar so we're gonna go ahead and copy that and we're gonna say basically um well actually let's define a variable so var search bar equals well this <laughs> okay and we're gonna say if search bar dot offset dot top is greater than or equal to let's create a new variable uh, uh no, actually, that is, we have already that. Uh, we need to define a variable for a top nav. Oh, just a second, because my cat is trying to lay down on my laptop. Uh, var top nav is equal to this. No, it's not equal to this. Um, it's equal to class of top nav that we have in our index.html right here. 
Okay, and so we're gonna say basically, I'm gonna delete this. Top nav, nav dot offset dot top. So for offset top is greater than or equal to search, search bar dot off, uh, no dot scroll top. It's the distance from the top. Let's go ahead and just uh, console dot log, yay or something. I don't know. Okay, now let's go to con inspect console and what the hell? Oh, we don't want the top nav dot offset dot top. We want the current pause. I'm really sorry. Uh, current pause. So if current dot pause is greater than or equal to search bar dot. Well, let's say offset dot top maybe i don't know um my cat oops there goes my menu hold on let me move him because oh my god you're fat um really not helping me at all okay let's refresh okay you can see that whenever we get to about here we're getting a new one yeah Okay, so it works fine, uh, just as expected. Uh, and when it comes to here, we're gonna say top nav dot toggle class active. Or no, let's say, okay, active. I mean, we always use active, so let's just stick with it. And then we're gonna go in our CSS and write here top nav dot active. Uh, position fixed top zero left zero. So let's check this out and boom. Yeah. Okay. Um. One thing that I do uh, notice <laughs> is that whenever we scroll, it keeps on appearing. That's because we're toggling a class, and we don't want that. So. We're just gonna say add class, and then you can see that you know it appears and everything, but it doesn't go away. And to make it go away, it's real simple. We just say else top nav dot remove class active, and then refresh, and let's check it out. Boom. Okay, and then there we go. Okay, yeah, I think it looks really good. And I mean, it's obviously not as smooth as it was in their website, because here it was like a little drop down menu. But the reason why the my previous tutorial that I'm actually recording right now, redoing, um, is because I tried to make that drop down menu, it didn't, it didn't work because I was trying a method that it was just impossible to do. Um, but I'm really happy with, these, with this result. Um, so that's gonna be it for this tutorial hope you guys enjoyed and if you did make sure to hit that like button because it really helps me out and make sure to comment down below what you guys want to see from me when i finish this series but yeah so yeah, i'll see you in the next one peace